Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl Brain Shanae and today I'll be sharing with you my anticipated reads for 2022. So what I have planned is there's a lot of anticipated reads that I plan to read next year. Um, and so I'm going to be pretty much breaking this up in four parts. Yes, there'll be four videos of my anticipated reads of 2022 because that's how many books, <laughs> awesome books are coming out next year. So it's going to be an overload for me, but I'm so ready for it. Um, but anyways, yes, there's going to be four parts of my anticipated reads list. So let's go ahead and get started with the first part. So part one. Okay, so one of the books I'm anticipating on reading in 2022 is If You Read This, this is by Kareen Geddon. She has also um, has also written another another book that I had read in 2000, or last year in 2020, and that is When Life Gives You Mangoes, um, which I was so excited to read. It's like a little middle grade book and I really enjoyed it. So I felt like this would be an awesome book as well. And of course, the cover is what got me mostly, as you can see. Um, and so let me go ahead and read the synopsis for you of what this book is about. So it says, when Brie was younger, her mama would surprise her with treasure hunts around their town. After she died three years ago, these became Brie's favorite memories. Now on her 12th, 12th birthday, her mama has another surprise, a series of letters leading Brie on one last treasure hunt. The first letter guides Brie to a special place. The next urges her to unlock a secret, and the last will change her life as she knows it. In this pugnant coming-of-age story of new memories, surprises, and moments of healing, Kareen Geddon beautifully captures the, um, the edge of adolescence when everything is thrilling, amazing, and terrifying in a way it will never be again. So I definitely looking forward to reading this. Um, I just, uh, they just released, um, she just released her cover, I believe a couple days ago, and I added it to my anticipated reads list, which it's, which is constantly growing. Uh, hopefully it'll stop, <laughs> but everyone is coming out with their uh, cover releases and everything at the same time. And so I'm just like overwhelmed, but overwhelmingly excited that all these books are coming out next year. So I will have tons to read next year for sure. But yeah, so this is one of the books I do plan on reading in 2022. The next book is One for All by Lily Lanoff. I saw the cover and I'm thinking, oh, this could be like a retelling and I believe it is. Um, so let me read the synopsis for this book. So it says, an, an, an own voices, gender bent retelling of the three musketeers in which a girl with a chronic illness trains as a musketeer and uncovers secrets, sisterhood and self love. Uh, Tanya Debaz, Debaz is most herself with a sword in, in her hand. Everyone in town thinks her near constant dizziness makes her weak, nothing but a sick girl. Even her mother is desperate to marry her off for security. But Tanya wants to be strong, independent, a, a fencer like her father, a former musketeer and her greatest champion. Then Papa is brutally, mysteriously murdered, his dying wish for Tanya to attend finishing school. But Le Academy des Amils, Amris, Tanya realizes is no finishing school. It's a secret training ground for a new kind of musketeer. Women who are socialites on the surface, but strap daggers un under their skirts, seduce men into giving up dangerous secrets and protect France from downfall. And they don't shy away from a sword fight. With her new found sisters at her side, Tanya feels for the first time like she has a purpose, like she belongs. But then she meets Atani, her first target in uncovering a potential assassination plot. He's kind, charming, and breathlessly attractive, and he might have information about what really happened to her father. Torn between duty and dizzying emotion, Tanya will have to lean on her friends, listen to her own body, and decide where her loyalties lie, or risk losing everything she's ever wanted. This debut novel is a fierce whirlwind adventure about the depths of found family, the strength that goes beyond the body, and the, de the determination it takes to fight for what you love. So... I love that this gender bent uh, and it is a retelling as I said but it's a Three Musketeers retelling which I have not read any retellings about the Three Musketeers and their women. So I found that very fascinating. I found that very fierce you know about women doing what men do best you know like I, I love it. I'm all for that. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely looking forward to reading this in 2022. This next one that I'm so excited for is This Wicked Fate by Kaylin Barron. 
and this is the second book of uh, this Poison Heart series. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what Briseis is going to be doing in this book because in the last book we get to know more about her or, like her family and her aunt and her mom and stuff like that and they're all named by these um, um, goddesses, Greek goddesses and, and stuff like that which I also found fascinating. So as you can see the cover is beautiful. I love this so so much. I love the first book. I also loved um, her um, other book that she had written was Cinderella's Dead, which was also amazing. So I am excited to know more about Briseis. And for this book, I meant to mention that this book comes out supposedly on June the 21st of next year. So hopefully there it won't be no pushback. It will stay on that date. Um, but you, you can already go ahead and pre-order it because I already have. <laughs> but uh, for this one, for the synopsis, it says, how much would you risk to save the ones you love? Would you tempt even the most dangerous fate? Best-selling author Kaylin Barron continues the story of Briseis and her family's deadly magic in the sequel to This Poison Heart. Briseis has one chance to save her mother, but she'll need to do the impossible. Find the last fragment of the deadly Abasaris heart. If she is to locate the missing piece, she must turn to the blood relative she's never known, learn about their secret powers, and take her place in their ancient lineage. Briseis is not the only one who wants the heart, and our enemies will stop at nothing to, to fulfill their own ruthless plans. The fates tell of a truly dangerous journey, one that could end in more heartache, more death. Bolstered by the sisterhood of ancient magic, can Briseis harness her power to save the people she loves most? The second book in this empowering and inclusive fantasy duology is perfect for fans of Legendborn and lore. So, okay, so this is a duology. I'm thinking as a series, like there's going to be at least a third book, but there's not. It's a duology, which is perfectly fine. So I know this is going to definitely, definitely going to give me something that I'll probably be waiting for next year because this sounds like really intense and I'm all for intense reads and finding out what happens as well as Briseis having connection with her um, biological mother. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. And like I said, this comes out in June next year. So definitely go ahead and pre-order if you haven't done so already. The next book that I'm looking forward to read, which comes out on March the 8th of next year, and that is Blood Scion by Deborah uh, Filet. I've been looking forward to this so, so much. Like I keep seeing her book all over the place and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to get my hands on it because I want to read it so bad. And just the cover is magnificent, is phenomenal. Whoever designed it prompts to you because you, you killed it. You killed it. And so like, this reminds me of the movie Avatar. That's what it looks like. And I think in one of her um, interviews, I think I watched it, it, I think it had some elements of like Avatar in a sense, uh, which I do love. And then I also think this is going to be a duology. So we'll be looking into a second book from Deborah. So yes, but let me go ahead and read the synopsis for this one. Because I really <laughs> am looking forward to reading this one as all the other ones of course but it says this is what they deserve they wanted me to be a monster i will be the worst monster they ever created 15 year old Sl uh, sloan can incinerate an enemy at will she is a scion a descendant of the ancient orisha gods under the loosest brutal ru brutal rule excuse me her identity means her death if her powers are discovered but when she is forcibly conscripted into the Lucis army on her 15th birthday, Sloane sees a new opportunity to overcome the bloody challenges of bloody challenges of Lucis training and destroy them from within. Sloane rises through the ranks and gains strength, but in doing so, risks something greater, losing herself entirely and becoming the very monster that she abhors. abhors. So... <sighs> Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. Um, I think there's more to what uh, on Goodreads has said for as the book description because it's very short. So I think there's more to that story. Um, that's what I'm hoping. The, like I said, the cover is spot on. It's fire. I'm definitely looking forward to reading this one for sure. This next book, um, I think what got me most is the cover. And a lot of these are definitely cover buys for sure when they come out and uh, like pre-ordered and stuff. Like literally all my pre-orders is pretty much prepared for next year in 2022. Um, but here is the book right here. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I love her hair. And it is Looking for Grace by Pamela Vernado. So yeah definitely the cover got me i really don't know what it's about so that's why i'm reading synopsis for each of these um just to get in more depths of what the each book is about per se 
Um, and so this book is supposedly coming out on October the 4th. Um, but like I said, like the dates are no guarantees due to COVID and stuff and especially the new variant that's now been discovered in the US today. I think it's Omicron, which everybody been saying Amarion. <laughs> and so he's been trending all over the place. Um, but anyway, so for this book, I'll read the synopsis. So it says, my brother is gone. My mom is too stuck in her own grief to see me. And my dad thinks pain isn't something to ever be discussed. Even my boyfriend has let me down over and over again. It feels like there's only one way forward, only one way out. Just when I'm ready to end my own life, something sucks me back in. One note. One sweet song to keep me going. Those melodic mo melodies sweetly singing in my ears to give me hope. Each morning, I figure, what's one day more? One more day for someone to see me, to hear me, to save me. But can they? Will they? Find out how you can be the one to help save a life at be the one com. So this sounds really good. It's definitely deep. Um, I, I feel like I'm going to have a connection um, with this book and the character as well because I have faced a lot of things, um, especially as a teenager and when I was growing up and, you know, how I felt alone and how I had to face things alone and was was like deep down, like doing my actions was saying, save me, but no one could see me. No one saw me. Um, so I think this is something that I'm definitely going to be crying when I read. Um, but I think that this book uh, should, should not be ignored. And I'm glad that this is on my list um, because this is very heartfelt. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people go through this and a lot of people don't want to discuss their pain because they think it looks weak, but it's not. You know, reaching out to somebody about it is a good thing. Um, and then when you don't have somebody, that's just another thing to that you like. Like even for me, I had to cope with, but I really didn't cope. I but somebody came into my life that saved me, and I really hope like if any of you are going through that, I mean, just having someone to talk to you, or shoot, you can even reach out to me, and I'll just be able to talk to you. You know, like you are not alone, and I just want you to 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 let you know that. But I do love this, the premise of this book, and I'm do I do look forward to reading this, especially when it comes out in October of next year. So this is the next book that I definitely definitely am anticipating. The next book that I'm um, am anticipating reading is You Truly Assumed by Layla Sabreen. Um, it's right up here, but you also know that I have uh, received an arc. Um, I, I received two arcs. So I have uh, the arc that come, and this book comes out February the 8th. But I also have um, a second copy right here that I, that I do plan on doing a giveaway on my Instagram. Um, I will still give you the uh, uh, the premise of this book, but I already have read the synopsis for this a, a lot of times on my channel, on most of my videos, so you can definitely check those out after you watch this one. Um, but th it says, this is a compelling and thought-provoking debut novel about a terrorist attack rocks the country and anti-Islamic sentiment stirs three Black Muslims, Muslim girls, create a space where they can shatter assumptions and share truths. Uh, Sabria has her whole summer planned out in color-coded glory, but those plans go out the window after a terrorist attack near her home. When the terrorist is assumed to be Muslim and is uh, Islamophobia grows, Sabria turns to her online journal for comfort. You truly assumed was never meant to be anything more than an outlet, but the blog goes viral as fellow Muslim, Muslim teens around the country flock to it and find solace and a sense of community. Soon, two more teens, Zakat and Farah, Farah, join Bree to run You Truly Assumed, and the three quickly form a strong friendship. But as the blog's popularity grows, so do the pushback and hateful comments. When one of them is threatened, the search to find out who is behind it all begins, and their friendship is put to the test when all three must decide whether to shut down the blog completely and lose what they worked for or to take a stand and risk everything to make their voices heard so this is definitely a book that's empowering I really do appreciate this book and I'm definitely looking forward to reading this um I'll probably have a review up prior to the release date which is the 8th of February so do look out for that or hit that um that bell so that way you'll get more um information and every time I um post a post a video you'll be able to get that notification right away um but definitely looking forward to reading this don't sleep on it because I can definitely tell you it sounds amazing and very empowering so this is the next book that I do for sure to plan on reading early in the year of 2022. Now this next book 
you know what I mean I'm just gonna put it up right now this book is stunning I love this cover I just love it so so much and this is the first book that I'm gonna be reading by Kasoko Jackson he has uh, done another book um, I think that came out last year I'm not sure please correct me if I'm wrong um, but this cover it's it's amazing I love it so so much and this book is coming out February the 22nd so it's gonna be coming out early in 2022 so you, you can't miss this one you just can't miss this one and I don't plan to and so for this book let me go ahead and read this uh, the synopsis for this one because I find this very interesting and I'm really excited to read it so it says a chance to rewrite their ending is worth the risk in this swoony romantic comedy from Kosoko Jackson it's been months since aspiring journalist Kian Andrews has heard from his ex-boyfriend, um, Hudson Rivers, but an urgent text has them meeting at a cafe. Maybe Hudson wants to profusely apologize for the breakup or confess his undying love. But no, Hudson has a favor to ask. He wants Kian to pretend to be his boyfriend while his parents are in town, and Kian reluctantly agrees. The dinner doesn't go exactly as planned and suddenly Kian is Hudson's plus one to George's wedding of the season. Hudson comes from a wealthy family where reputation is everything and he really can't afford another mistake. If Kian goes, he'll help Hudson preserve appearances and get the opportunity to rub shoulders with some of the biggest names in media. This could be the big career break Kian needs, but their fake relationship is starting to feel like it might be more than than a means to an end and it's time for both men to fact check their feelings so oh my god like this is cute like I'm definitely looking forward to reading this and I do plan on reading a lot more romance in 2022 because I read some romance this year in 2021 but not as much as I wanted to so I definitely got to get back into my romance groove so I do plan on reading this and it's so cute I love it oh my I'm just excited I'm excited okay all right so the next book, um, this next book is called The City Inside by Samet Bazu, Basu, and I I think this is the cover is what got me more, has captured my, my attention. Um, but let me read the synopsis for this one. And just by the way, this book supposed, is supposed to come out on June the 7th. So just watch out for that date if you are planning to read this or you're looking forward to reading it or just now that you plan on putting that on your list to read for, for um, next year. So it says, the future, or excuse me, the near future epic, but the internationally celebrated Samet Basu pulls no punches as it comes for your anxieties about society, government, the environment, and our world at large, yet never loses sight of the hopeful potential of the future. They'd known the end times were coming, but hadn't known they'd be multiple choice. Joey is a reality controller and near future Delhi. Her job is to supervise the multimedia, multi-reality live streams of Indy, one of the South Asian's fastest rising online celebrities who also happens to be her, her college ex. Joey's job gives her considerable, considerable culture power, but she's too caught up in day-to-day -day crisis handling to see this or to figure out what she wants from her life. Rudra is a recluse estranged from his wealthy and powerful family, fled to imp impoverished immigrant neighborhood where he loses himself in video games and his neighbor's lives. When his father's death pulls him back into his family's orbit, an impulsive job offer from Joey becomes his only, his only escape from the life he never wanted. But no good deed goes unpunished. As Joey and Rudra become enmeshed in multiple conspiracies, their lives start to spin out of control, complicated by dysfunctional relationships, corporate loyalty, and the never-ending pressures of surveillance capitalism. When a bigger picture begins to unfold around them, they must each decide how to do the right thing in a shadowy world where simply maintaining the status quo feels like an, an accomplishment. Ultimately, resistance will not, cannot take the same shape for these two very different people. So this book really sounds intense and very complex. Um, I feel like this is a book that I'll definitely mark up because it's dealing with the environment, uh, it's dealing with the government, um, it's dealing with media, social media that has been very big in the last few years now. So I do am very interested in reading this because it might give me, it might give some insight on a few things. And if you don't already know, like social media and technology is like, 
it's everywhere now and they're doing like literally people used to buy dvds to watch the movies you don't even have to do that anymore because they're streaming on hulu netflix uh, um, peacock hbo max there's so many things that um that you don't need to you don't need to buy them you can just do you know uh, purchase or um subscribe to a streaming service so <laughs> technology and everything is definitely on is definitely in the, in the works of controlling a lot of things <laughs> if we don't know that already but i do plan on reading this this do sound this do this does sound very complex and if this is something i might want to buddy read with um and probably do a live yes i'm do plan i do plan on doing a lot more lives next year with a couple of people i still have to reach out to some people if they do want to participate in them or if they're interested um but yeah i do plan on doing that trying to engage um a lot more with the community I've been doing that, you know, as popping into people's lives and stuff like that, popping in and out as much as I can. Um, but I do want to also put my foot forward and do some lives my, on my, you know, myself. Uh, um, but yes, yeah, so I do plan on reading this. And this sounds very, very interesting. This next book, it is called This Vicious Grace by Emily Theed. I, I hopefully I'm saying her name correctly. If not, I do apologize. And even on the cover, it says her gift can save or it can kill. And this is supposed to be the first book, I guess, maybe in a duology or series, uh, which they call The Last of Fenestra. So I do look forward to reading this. And this is supposed to come out in June on the 28th. So this sounds very, very, um, very good. But let me read the synopsis and you can tell me what you think. So it says three weddings, three funerals. Alyssa's gift from the gods is supposed to magnify a partner's magic, not kill every suitor she touches. Now with one week's left, one week's left until a hungry swarm of demons devours everything on our island home, Alyssa is running out of time to find a partner and stop the invasion. When a powerful priest when a powerful priest convinces the faithful that killing Alyssa is the island's only hope, her own soldiers try to assassinate her. Desperate to survive, Alyssa hires Dante, a cynical outcast marked as a killer, to become her personal bodyguard. But as rebellion explodes outside the gates, Dante's dark secrets may be the biggest betrayal. He holds the key to her survival and her heart, but is he the one person who can help her master her gift or destroy her, her once and for all? Emily Thede's exciting fantasy debut, This Vicious Grace, will keep readers turning the pages until the devastating conclusion and leave them primed for more. So this really sounds exciting. It talks about demons and stuff like that. So I'm definitely for it. And then, of course, this book comes out, like I said, June the 28th. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. It sounds really good. Um, I, this, the world building, I can tell, is going to be phenomenal. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this book. Let me know if you've heard about this book or if it has been on your radar. I recently learned about it a couple weeks ago. So I'm definitely pumped for this one. Now this next one I'm definitely looking for I'm definitely looking forward to reading um I believe it's a graphic novel I think I, I think so um but here is the cover and it is gorgeous by the way and it, as you can see it's by Ibby Zaboy and you know a lot of people love Ibby Zaboy and so do I um I love her work I love her writing it's fantastic um and so for this book it's you know it's a Koye to the People a Black Panther novel um, and this is um, going to be coming out on March the first. So it's um, so it's not a graphic novel, um, from what I from what I know. Who knows? Um, it's just a novel itself, and the cover is beautiful, and it's about Okoye, and I love Okoye. She's one of my favorite characters in the black in, in Black Panther, of course. You know, women empowerment. I do love that. Um, so for this book, let me read the synopsis for this one. It says, "It is a boy, a National Book Award finalist, and New York Times bestselling author." joins Marvel Universe storytelling with this heartfelt novel that takes Okoye to America for the very first time. Okoye, Okoye is a new recruit for Tataka World's Guard, the Dora Milaje. Known for their loyalty and warrior abilities, the Dora are, are respected and revered in Okoye's home country of Wakanda. But when Okoye is sent to her very first mission to America, she'll learn that her status as a Dora means nothing to New Yorkers and her, and her expectations for the world outside of her own uh, of her own quickly fall apart. Chosen to accompany King T'Chaka on a hum humanitarian mission, Okoye finds herself trying to help teens. Excuse me, Okoye finds her herself trying to help teens dealing with addiction and gentrification in a forgotten neighborhood in Brooklyn. Caught between duty to her country and listening to her own heart, 
Okoye must find her own way and determine the type of Dora Milaje and woman she wants to be. Complete your Marvel collection with these best-selling fan favorites, Black Panther, The Young Prince, book one, um, that's by Ronald L. Smith, Black, and then Black Panther, The Young Prince, Spellbound, that's book two by Ronald L. Smith. Uh, you have Loki, Where Mischief Lies by Mackenzie Lee Gamora, and Gamora and, and Nebula, Sisters in Arms by Mackenzie Lee, Miles Morales, Spider-Man by J uh, Jason Reynolds, Unstoppable Wasp by Sam Mags, by Sam Mags. You have Black Widow, uh, Red Vengeance by Margaret Stahl, and you have Black Widow Forever read by Margaret Stahl, and Captain Marvel Higher, Further, Faster by Lisa Palmer. So these books are, I guess they're associated with one another in a sense. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. Um, the cover is definitely what got me the most, um, but the storyline is very interesting and I do look forward to reading this. And like I said, it comes out on March the 1st. Now, now this next book I'm definitely looking forward to reading. It's Goliath by Toshi Anabuchi and the cover is what got me the most. I'm just gonna let y'all know. And even on the front of the cover it says Anibuchi, Anibuchi sets fire to the boundary between fiction and reality. Riveting, disturbing, and rendered in mastered or masterful detail. And that was said by um, Lee Bardugo. So she did a little blurb on the cover. Um, and this sounds really amazing. And I, ha I haven't read Riot Baby yet, which I really need to. Um, so maybe sometimes within next year, I can read Riot Baby before I read Goliath. Um, but this book comes out on January the 25th. So I, I don't even know. Hopefully I can read Riot Baby that same month as Goliath comes out and then I'll read Goliath afterwards. But who knows? That's a little pushing it. So I might just read Goliath and Riot Baby later on in 2022. Um, but for this one, which I believe it's set in the future, it says in the, t in the 2050s, Earth has begun to empty. Those with the means and the privilege have departed the great cities of the United States for the more comfortable confines of space colonies. Those left behind salvage what they can from the collapsing infrastructure. As they ache out an existence, their neighborhoods are being cannibalized. Brick by brick, their houses are sent to the colonies. What was once a home, now a quaint reminder for the colonists of the world that they wrecked. A primal biblical epic flung into the future, Goliath weaves weaves together disparate desperate narratives disparate narratives a space dweller looking at new haven connecticut as a chance to reconnect with his spiraling lover a group of laborers attempting to renew the promises of earth's crumbling cities a journalist attempting to capture the violence of the streets a marshal trying to solve a kidnapping into a richly urgent mosaic about race class gentrification and who is allowed to be the hero of any history so this sounds really intense, but I do look forward to reading this. Um, I feel like from what I could, what I read from the synopsis alone that we'll probably get a couple of different perspectives or different points of view. Um, so definitely looking forward to reading this book. Like I, this is my first book that I'll be reading by him, uh, by Tochi. Um, and so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what this one is about once I have the physical book in my hands. Um, but this sounds really good. Um, it's very captivating it talks about our future and stuff so yeah it sounds really good so definitely can't wait for that but I really won't have to wait that long since it'll be coming out January the 25th so I'll be getting that that'll be one of the books I'll be reading in January for sure <laughs> this next book that I'm so excited to read especially since I've read Black Sun this past the past month I now need to read the next book and that is Fevered, uh, is it Fevered? I think it's Fevered Heart, uh, or excuse me, Fevered Star <laughs> uh, by Rebecca Roanhorse and the cover. I love it. A lot of people are like, eh, I don't know about the cover, but I love the cover. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's really, really gorgeous. Um, and this book comes out on April the 19th. So I'll be waiting a little while, but I think I, I, my timing of reading Black Sun was spot on in my opinion. Like I said, I just read Black Sun last month and I love uh, Serapio, uh, Narampa, uh, um, I just, Azala, I loved, Exalia, I loved all those characters and having their different points of view and then they're all coming together as one as far as their stories and their backgrounds so let me read the synopsis for this one so it says return to the meridian with new york times bestselling author rebecca roanhorse's sequel to the most critically hailed epic fantasy of 2020 black sun finalist for the hugo nebula nebula lavada and locus awards there are no tides more treacherous than those of the heart teak saying 
The great city of Tova is shattered. The sun is held within the smothering grip of the crow god's eclipse, but a comet that marks the death of a ruler and heralds the rise of a new order is imminent. The Meridian, a land where magic has been con condified and the worship of gods suppressed. How do we live when legends come to life and the faith you have is rewarded? As sea captain Izalia, Izala is swept up in the chaos and currents of change, she finds an unexpected ally in the former priest of knives. For the clan matriarchs of Toba, tense alliances form as far-flung enemies gather and the war in the heavens is reflected upon the earth. And for Serapio and Arampa, both now living avatars, the struggle for free the struggle for free will and personhood in the face of destiny rages. How will Serapio stay human when he is steeped in prophecy and surrounded by those who desire only his power? Is there a future for Narampa in a transformed Tova without her total destruction? Welcome back to the fantasy series of the decade in Fevered, or Fevered, Fevered Star, book two of Between Earth and Sky. So this sounds really good. I definitely look forward to going back to the Meridian. Um, I loved being in that world. Uh, I find that it had some, like, it felt like science fiction, like low-key, like sci-fi fantasy type of deal. And I love, like, I love fantasy and a hint of sci-fi is also amazing as well. Um, so definitely looking to, looking forward to reading this and also the cover. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. Love it. <laughs> This next book I just found out about like literally a couple days ago and the cover is mostly what got my attention and that is Take My Hand and right there and as you can see the cover is beautiful and this is by Dolan Perkin Perkins Valdez. Um, I have not read any books uh, by this author but I think this book might actually be amazing and this book comes out on April the 12th and so for this one let me read the synopsis for this one. So it says, I think this is a historical fiction, I think. So let me, let me see. So it says, inspired by true events that rock the nation, a profoundly moving novel about a black nurse in post-segregation Alabama who blows the whistle on a terrible wrong done to her patients. From the New York Times bestselling author of Wench, uh, Montgomery, Alabama, 1973, fresh out of nursing school, civil... Civil Townsend has big plans to make a difference, especially in her Afri African American community. At the Montgomery Family Planning Clinic, she intends to help women make their own choices for their excuse me, excuse me for their lives and bodies. But when her first week on the job takes her down a dusty country road to a worn to worn down one room cabin, she's shocked to learn that her new patients are children, just eleven and thirteen years old. Neither of the Williams sisters has even kissed a boy, but they are poor and black. And for those handling the family's welfare benefits, that's benefits. That's reason enough to have the girls on birth control. As civil, as civil grapples with her role, she takes India, Erica and their family into her heart until one day she arrives at the door to learn the unthinkable has happened and nothing will ever be the same for any of them. Decades later, with with her daughter grown and a long career in her wake, Dr. Sybil Townsend is really is ready to retire, to find her peace and to leave the past behind. But there are people and stories that refuse to be forgotten. That must not be forgotten because history repeats what we don't remember, which that's a very true statement. We're still doing the same stuff to this very day. Um, especially in the African American African American community, and what and what this and what the government has done, and what they're still doing, and what the police force has done towards the African American community in itself, uh, nothing has changed. It's still the same. Nothing really has changed at all. And literally, that what it says because history repeats what we don't remember because it does. History repeats itself whether we like it or not, and it's going to take a lot of change in order for not to have things done the way things were done back then, and still there's not really that much big of a change, but hopefully one day we'll get it right. But this book sounds very intense. I do look forward to reading this. this um, I don't, I, there's a lot of stories like this um, that we know about back in the day during post-segregation and in the South, so I, this is definitely a must read for me. I definitely want to read this, um, and see and into you know get to know more about this author of Dolan Dolan Perkins Valdez. This sounds very intense, and the cover alone was very captivating. I think so. Definitely looking forward to reading this, and this comes out in April the twelfth. Now these next two books are from the same author, and I'm looking forward to reading more of her work. 
And the first one I want to introduce is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. And this is by Akweki uh, Amezi. Uh, I love the, the, the writing is just amazing. I love it. And so this book is supposed to be coming out. Well, actually, it doesn't really give a lot of details about the book. Um, but I have like, if you go on her Instagram, I think she does have more details of when it comes out. I'm on Goodreads right now. And it's not really giving me um, any updates as of now. So who knows when that'll be coming out. But I know it comes out next year for sure. Um, but for the synopsis, let me see if it even has that because I'm trying to look for it. And it doesn't. So let me see if I can find the synopsis somewhere else besides Goodreads. So I was able to find a little bit more information on her website. It doesn't say the release date, but it does give information about um, the book itself. Um, so for it says, let's see about the book. Uh, so it says here, the New York Times bestselling author of Dear Synthron, the National Book Award finalist and one of our greatest living writers, uh, reimagines the love story in this fresh and seductive, a uh, seductive novel about a young woman seeking joy while healing from loss. So it says, Faye Adekola wants to learn how to be alive again. It's been five years since the accident that killed the love of her life, and she's almost a new person now. An artist, artist with her own studio and sharing a brownstone apartment with her ride-or-die best friend, Joy, who insists it's time for Faye, Faye to, or Faye, I think that's, I'm, hopefully I'm saying the, the character's name correctly, to ease back into the dating scene. Faye isn't ready for anything serious, but a steamy encounter at a rooftop party cascades into a whirlwind summer she could have never imagined. A luxury trip to a tropical island, decadent meals in the glamorous home of celebrity chef, and a major creator who wants to launch her art career. She's even started dating the perfect guy, but their new relationship might be sabotaged before it has a chance by the dangerous thrill Faye feels every time she locks eyes with the one person in the house who is mostly definitely off limits. This new life she asked for just got a lot more complicated and they must begin her search for real, for real answers. Who is she ready to become? Can she release her past and honor her grief while still embracing her future? And of course, there's the biggest question of all, how far is, she's willing, how far is she willing to go for a second chance at love? So this sounds really interesting. It says, um, Akweki Amezi's uh, vivid and passionate writing takes us deep into a world of possibilities and healing and the constant bravery of choosing love against all odds. So oh, this book definitely sounds like a, a love story that I definitely cannot wait to get in my hands and to read. Um, it definitely sounds intense. Um, hopefully we will we'll get a release date. If you know the release date, let me know down below in the comments. Um, in the comment section because I really want to know uh, more about um, the release date so I can be prepared or maybe I'll check around and see um, but anyways this next book that she'll be coming out which is going to be coming out on February the 5th uh, excuse me February 15th of next year is Bitter um, and this is supposed to be another version of Pet Pet it says Pet 0 0.5 so you know let's see what this one is about and of course the cover is amazing and I loved Pet I read Pet uh, last year and it was really good and it was the topic was very intense but I definitely it was a, definitely a book that ne needs to be read if you haven't read, read it already. So it says Bitter is thrilled to have been chosen to attend Eucalyptus a special school where she can focus on her painting surrounded by other creative teens but outside this haven the streets are filled with protests against the deep injustices that grip the town of Lucille. Bitter's instinct is to stay safe within the walls of Eucalyptus, but her friends aren't willing to settle for a world that the adults say is just the way things are. Pulled between old friendships, her creative passion, and a new romance, Bitter isn't, isn't sure where she belongs, in the art studio or in the streets. And if she does find a way to help the revolution while being true to who she is, she must also ask at what cost. So yes, definitely looking forward to reading this. Uh, when they released the cover of Bitter, I immediately put it um, on my pre-order list. So definitely looking forward to getting this and reading this. Like I said, I read Pet. So if you haven't read Pet, go ahead and do so. That way you can prepare yourself for Bitter, which is coming out next, which come out next year in February. This next book, I cannot wait to read. Um, I still need to read um, the uh, her first book that she has uh, published and that is the forgotten uh, forgotten girl so I definitely need to read that before this book comes out or I'll probably read this book and then read forgotten girl but of course as you already know I just said the name of one of her books so you have right here the next book that she is going to be coming out with and that is the girl in the lake by India Hill Brown and of course the cover is mesmerizing 
Um, and this book is supposed to be coming out in January the 4th. So literally, if you haven't pre-ordered it, I suggest you do so. Um, I already have, like I said, I have a pre-order list. It's, it's very intense. It's very extensive of my list and I should probably compact it, but we'll see when that time comes. <laughs> but for this book, let me read the synopsis. So it says, for fans of Small Spaces, Doll Bones, and Mary Downing Hain, a truly chilling and hyster hysterically inspired ghost story from the award-winning author of The Forgotten Girl. Celeste knows she should be excited to spend two weeks at her grandparents' lake house with her brother, Owen, and their cousin, Capri and Daisy, but she's not. Bugs, bad cell reception, and the dark waters of the lake? No thanks. On top of that, she just failed her swim test and hates being in the water. It's terrifying. But her grandparents are strong believers in their family knowing how to swim, especially having grown up during a time of segregation at public schools or public pools. Without the opportunity to learn, grandma's sister drowned when they were kids. But soon strange things start happening, like Celeste's cousins accusing her of waking them up in the middle of the night. But Celeste it hasn't been awake during uh, during the night. During the night, she knows she's been fast asleep because she's been having terrible nightmares about drowning. Things at the old house only get spookier until one evening when Celeste looks in the steamy mirror after a shower and sees her face, but twisted, different. Who is the girl in the mirror and what does she want? Past and present mingle in this spine tingling ghost story by India Hill Brown. So I think this is going to be a good one to read, especially since she doesn't know like she's, I feel like she's like, like, sleepwalking and not realizing it but who knows it sounds really like really scary definitely appropriate for October if you don't want to read it already um in January you can definitely wait for it for October because it does sound like a very spooky book even like the girl on the cover who I believe is Celeste she looks she looks scary so definitely looking forward to reading this and like I said this comes out literally on January the 4th so definitely right as new, new year hits it's going to be coming out. So definitely looking forward to reading this. And like I said, if you don't want to read it in January, it'll definitely be a perfect read for October for Halloween. So yeah, we have this book right here. And then I have one more book for this video for part one of my anticipated reads. So let's go ahead with the last and final book for this video. Now this next book, I am super pumped for this book. I love the author. She is amazing. She's just, she's funny, she, especially her, when she's on her TikTok. She's just amazing. And also, if you don't know, but should know, there's a read along going on. Uh, which you can check out my IG for, for the uh, dates and schedule, or you can go on her IG as well and uh, check her out, which you will also will be doing lives on each segment of the uh, set of chapters that you'll be reading in the, in the, um, this month in December. Uh, and this book that I'm speaking of that I'm highly anticipating when it comes out is right here, Ashes of Gold by JL. Yes, we're going to be going back into this world and I'm so excited to read this. I'm so excited to know more about Rue. Um, I'm, I'm on the Rue's crew right now for Ashes of Gold. I'm team Julius, you know, everybody loves a day one. So, you know, we got team Jamal, they can stay over there <laughs> who, who literally Rue doesn't even know about like she only met him for like a couple of seconds you guys a couple of seconds so I don't understand why they have, there's a team Jamal but it's okay I'm not a hater but I will say t I'm team Julius which is Rue's day one you know so I guys be loyal you know to him you know what I mean <laughs> but anyways this cover is gorgeous and I'm definitely looking forward to reading this and this comes out in January the 11th so if you haven't pre-ordered it I suggest you do so and also join us for our read-along that's currently happening right now in December so for this book let me go ahead and read the synopsis and know I've done all my introductions I've, I've let y'all know about the read-along so now it's time for you to get to know what this book this next book is about which ashes of gold so let's go so it says, in the heart-pounding conclusion of the Wings of Ebony duology, which number one New York Times bestselling author Nicole Yoon calls bold, inventive, big-hearted, and deeply perceptive, Rue makes her final stand to reclaim her people's stolen magic. Rue has no memory of how she ended up locked in a basement prison without her magic or her allies, but she's a girl from the East Row, and girls from the East Row don't give up. Girls from the East Row pick themselves back up when they fall. Girls from the East Row break themselves out. But reuniting with her friends is only half the battle. When she finds them again, Rue makes a vow. She will find a way to return the magic that the Chancellor has stolen from her father's people. 
Yet, even on Yeo Peak, Rue is a misfit with half a foot back in Houston and half a heart that is human as well as God. She's not sure she's the right person to lead the fight to reclaim a glorious past. When a betrayal sends her into a tailspin, Rue must decide who to trust and how to be the leader that her people deserve. Because if she doesn't, it isn't just Yeo that will be destroyed. It will be Rue herself. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so excited about this book. Uh, I've been wanting to read this forever. I'm so jealous of the people that received ARCs and, and you know stuff on NetGalley and have already read it. Now I'm like I'm like in the dark and I'm like oh my gosh I want to read it right now but it's okay. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna get my um I order you know pre-order everything get my signed edition and all that stuff. It, it's fine. It's fine. I can wait. I can wait for a release day. I can do that. I can be patient. Um but yes this book uh, God. when I read Wings of Ebony earlier I loved it and fell in love with Rue and her 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 sister and the world uh, building and and stuff like that as she goes back to East Grove and she goes back to her where her father you know where her father is from I'm just I just I'm ready for it um but yeah if y'all haven't pre-ordered it y'all definitely need to get on y'all definitely need to do that y'all need to get on that right now uh, <laughs> but anyway so like i said earlier in this video like there are going to be four parts for my my anticipated reads because i have a lot of anticipated reads coming out in 2022 and i don't want to miss any single one of them i don't want to compact it and make it shorter of a list i'm not going to do that because um you know i want to give credit to all these amazing authors for their great work of what's coming out next year um so yeah i know no, I didn't want to do all my anticipated reads in one video it had probably been like so so long <laughs> as as well like as long this video is already long and I could already imagine saying all my anticipated reads in one video that would be insane so literally like I said four parts so this was the first part first part of my anticipated reads of 2022 um I really hope you enjoyed this video part one um if you did please 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 give me a thumbs up also hit that subscribe button that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future but thank you so much for watching you guys and please stay healthy and stay safe see ya